Hello everybody. In this video I'm going to show you how I modify the 12 volt compressor for the uh, homemade hand engraving machine. Last video I kind of went over the cost to all the components so this one I'll show you how to do the modifications on the pump. a nice little bag. I use that to put your pedals in if you were gonna go somewhere. These items we don't need so set that off to the side and here's the pump. And let's get to it. done it should look something like this so, let's go from here one of the things I do right off the bat is give myself enough cord to work with so myself a couple of feet there cut that off don't need this anymore Okay, and just for everybody's information on these uh, wires, one side has an imprint on it. That's the negative side of the leads, the side with the printing on it. All right. by taking off this fitting we don't need it all of the uh, the fittings on this have a thread compound on it that uh, makes these fittings a little tight so it just takes a little brute force and ignorance to get it well that's a nice one normally it doesn't come out like that so that was a good that was a good thing Next, I want to take this gauge off. It's on there tight, tight. So, get out my channel locks. And it's going to destroy this gauge, but I don't care. I don't need it. I'll just pitch it. I've got two others that held up through this part of the operation. So. There's a good start. Something else I do is I pull off this end cap. So that I can pull the piston out when I get it all apart. There's a little C-clip on the shaft that holds the... Uh, There's a little C-clip right here that holds the, the piston on here. This is why this is nice and quiet is because there's a bearing on here. The other, uh, the other pumps I've had apart were just a metal to metal shaft and they were noisy and vibrated a lot. This is nice and smooth and quiet because of the bearings. So let me pull this C-clip out. Set it off to the side because we'll be putting it back in now. Let's take out these four screws on top. And when you've got it apart, you can also measure the stroke of the piston and the diameter of the chamber, and you'll know exactly how much the volume of air 
that's being pushed back and forth if you know for the guys who like doing math all right that all comes off not much to it so this piece in here I need to modify so I want to keep this I'll keep all this stuff but I'm going after this right here on the lid I'm going to pop that off because it no longer needs to be there as you can see there's there is some oil in this and I'm going to clean it off, but when I put it back together, I'll put a little bit more, like three-in-one oil or something in it, a little ring here that's no longer needed. So let's take that out. You can open this hole up if you want. It's not necessary. Uh, here's the cylinder. And there's the piston and we're going to pull it out because this is what we want to modify and out it comes there she is well, one of the first things I want to do is get it degreased now I'm going to pull these off but there's a good chance I might put them back on I'm done modifying this. So, little check valve. It's no longer needed. Yep, that one's being tenacious. So, what you want to do now is degrease it. Because there's a couple of ways. I've taken it all the way apart. I've countersunk these holes here and here. And I've put a rivet in there and squeezed it. Well, that caused me a little problem because I had to shave the edges to get it back in. So, the easiest, quickest way of doing this is just filling these holes with an epoxy. Super glue doesn't work real well unless you've got the hardening, the hardener for it to, that it'll set up quick. It's just too runny. So I'm going to use isopropyl alcohol to degrease this piston so that I can seal them holes. Get her as close to degrees as possible so that this uh, epoxy will do its do its job. Okay, now I'm going to put this little valve back in because it will help hold the uh, epoxy in place. Slippery, slippery little goomer. Alright, let's get this back on here. And we'll press on. thought it'd be easier to clean it but we need to block both of these off and what I use I really like that stuff because it it'll sets up instantly with the uh, ultraviolet light really makes the job much easier Okay, I'm having trouble getting this little this little check valve back in place. 
like I said, I probably shouldn't have taken it out to begin with. Didn't need to. But the last one I did that way because I used a rivet in there instead of, and it was kind of, it, it, this is much easier. Using the epoxy or this uh, fix and feel sealer. This is a lot easier. The rivet was kind of, it worked, but it wasn't, uh, wasn't real easy. So, like I said, bulletproof package in here. All right. Got that out. And I think we're ready to fill these holes. Get her to set up here. Comes in a pin like this, and what I do is squeeze it out and fill these holes in. I'm filling them, filling that hole to the top right there. Turn around, fill this one up to the top. This stuff works really good for this. Like I said, I've tried super glue, that didn't work. And epoxies, you mix and then it's hard to get in the hole. This with this little tip, you can put it right where you want it. And, quick bleed. myself on that bulletproof packaging. Alright, let's get this back in and now you hit it with the ultraviolet light and it sets up. I'm going to pull the, the device out. There we go. Now, hit it with the light for a few seconds and that sets up Go. Hit it with the ultraviolet light. I'll give it a few seconds. I don't know what exactly what it takes, but it sets up pretty quick. Pretty quick. So, I don't know if you can see that, but it's that's all you do. It's a five second. That's some neat stuff. I really like it. All right, let's see what else we got here. Let's make sure these are tight. And I'm going to put a little bead around both of these. And that should do it. bead of this super glue around these check valves that are no longer needed. We just want it to push the air back and forth. And now let's get it to set up. tacky yet. We'll hit it a few more times with the ultraviolet just to make sure. And that part of the mod is complete. Okay now what we want to do is put it all back together. this in there back on the shaft 
get my little C clip in place. And pop it back into position. Easier said than done. Okay, C clips back into position. These are setting up nicely. It probably doesn't need this much. UV on it to get it to set, but if a little is good, a whole lot must be a whole lot better. So we'll go with that. Now, the stroke of this is exactly a half an inch, a quarter inch down, a quarter inch up. I've measured it, but feel free to measure it again. And we'll put this back in place. And I'm going to put a little, oh, I guess three in one oil, right down the sides of it there, and there, and to replace the oil that I wiped out. And now we got to deal with this. needs to go back on. Goes like this. And this seal. And then there's two ports here. I use the one on top, you can use either port. We'll get to that in a second. So it can be turned either way. This is the way it came apart, with the one port to the rear. But it can be put in any of one of four positions. Like if you want to run your hose out of this side port, you can put it wherever you want. I'm going to put it back to where it was because I used the top port. Screw it all back together. been a good time to check the diameter of the sil inside diameter of the cylinder so if you wanted to do the math on the volume of air that's actually being pushed back and forth you can do that from I, I went through all that it didn't really help me much as far as understanding how this thing worked because it still works regardless of the volume I think uh, too much volume you'd have a problem so this is probably the perfect size for this handpiece. Now, the next thing is, I went to the hardware store and I got a compression fitting. It's a 1 8 inch OD by a 1 8 inch MIP. Now, what we've got don't need the cap but we need this piece right here because this is what will screw into here but first I have to open this diameter up to the same inside diameter as the tubing I use which is a 170 inside diameter with a quarter inch outside diameter so real quick I'm gonna run a drill bit through this thing
there you have it. I opened that hole up to the same inside diameter as the tubing. Now what I'm going to do is put a little ribbon dope on it. Make sure I got a good seal here. Which this stuff definitely give me a good seal. of it, not that it matters, but seven sixteenths wrench, tighten that on down. All right, now on this side hole, we need to plug that because I'm not using that one, don't need it, needs to be plugged. And what it is is a, I believe it's a five sixteenths. 24 some people call them grub screws I call them set screws and you can put ribbon dope on it but I don't think it needs it or you can put Loctite or something like that a thread compound but that goes in there nicely and uh, tighten her down we are so far. Got the one hole plugged and we've got this 1 8 inch OD by 1 8 inch MIP installed in the top and we had to open it up to 170. Now we need a quarter inch it's quarter inch OD by 1 8 inch FIP, MIP, FIP, I don't know the difference. Pipe thread. And you'll want to hold on to this. And this little piece right here, because that's what you'll put your quarter inch tubing into. So now this, scrap a little ribbon dope around this, this piece. Okay. And then this screws onto here. Sixteenths. Now she's good and tight. You put your cap. This piece together. So you can screw this onto your pump. And now it's ready to be installed in whatever box or however you're going to do it. And then you put another fitting going through the lid or just come out a hole in the side. It doesn't have to jump through a fitting. It just makes it easy to disconnect it and stow everything, you know. Just the options you have. So, there's the modified compressor. Let's put this piece back on it. There you have it. The modified 12 volt Pittsburgh 
pump from uh, Harbor Freight and this is ready to uh, install and wire into the system and that's what we'll do in the next video we'll be building up the box and probably the video following that I'll wire everything but for now that's it and that's how I modified several pumps now works really well love this pump thanks for watching have a good day